we're gonna do a very new kind of design that I haven't gone over with you yet. Good Sunday morning to you too. I'm all dressed, if you can see, I've got paint splotches on my clothes. We're gonna do some dirty house projects later and I'm ready. I'm gonna get paint on me, I'm gonna get bike grease on me. Can't wait. But first, quilting. So, um, here is what we're working on today. It's something that I call branching designs because of how the design grows from one motif to the next. Um, today we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna start with spirals. Now the way we've been doing spirals is like this, where you have one path in and then you take a different path out. But for this branching design, you're gonna take the same path in and out. You're gonna spiral in and then follow along that path back out until the place that the design changes. So let's go with that. So this is a different spiral. And if the if like figuring out how to get back out of your spirals has been hard, and you're like, oh no, another spiral design, you should try this one because you get to just go back out the way you came in and you might really like that. That might really work for you and get you more familiarity with the spirals. So here's our first spiral. It's got a little bit of a stem on it. I made my spiral. And now following that path that I made, I'm gonna come back out. And wherever I think it's a good idea to put my next spiral, I'm gonna stop and that next spiral is going to branch right off of the first one. This is just like a tree. There's the thick branch, and then there's the thin branch, and then there's the really thin branch, and then there's the little twig. That's exactly how this design is going to grow. Each new thing comes off the one before. So I was here. I'm going to travel back and put another one. I can travel back. I don't have to go all the way back to that stem part of the spiral either. I can stop right here and put my next one. Also, the spirals can change in size. Look how big that one was compared to the one before it. And now I stopped and I travel back along where I came. Put my next one, travel back. Put my next one. There's so much you can vary with this. You can vary which direction the spirals are pointing. You can vary whether they're large or small, and you can vary how long the stem is. So it gives you a lot of options in figuring out how to fill in any little gaps or spaces that you need to go back and address. And if you, the only thing that's, um, that I would say is a little challenging about this is if you need to get somewhere else, you're either faced with stopping and starting your thread, which is fine. You can stop at any of these places and nobody will be able to tell that you did that. And then you could just restart anywhere else and it will, you won't be able to detect any difference in the design. The alternative to that is if you're like, oh gosh, no, I really want to be over here is you would have to travel along all this stuff that you did to get over there. I don't like doing that much traveling, so I wouldn't, but you could. That's your decision. If you just really hate breaking your thread and relocking the threads, if you're doing this as a quilter, then those are your two options for that. Um, but starting from here is where I was. And that little baby one. I could put another baby one right in there if I wanted. You could have two spirals coming off the same, branching off of the same stem. That would be fine, you can do that. If that helps you solve your space, your space needs. Yeah, I don't wanna stop drawing that, so I know it's working. Uh, okay, so I bet you've got the gist of that. The one thing grows off of the thing that you just did. And to get to that place that the next one starts, you just travel along what you already drew. So let's try that in a slightly more complicated design. This time we're gonna add leaves onto our little twigs. So, and they're not gonna be spirally. 
Here's my little twig. Boring. Let's make it less boring. Leaf. And now I'm going to travel back the way I came to add some more leaves. Leaf. Leaf. And whenever I feel like my leaf, my branch is filled up enough with leaves, then I get to go make my new branch. My new branch is going to grow off of the old branch, right? Just like the tree I drew. So I was here. I could sneak right out between those two leaves and there's my new branch. And I'll do the same thing on this one. Leaf at the end of that and then sliding back down that twig, put leaves to either side until there's no more space to add leaves. Got it. Okay, where should we go next? How about we travel right out here? this. This space is already filled with the leaf. I don't have to worry about that side. I just fill in on this side. And maybe over here I do a small one. I can decide do I want to put one in there or not. Your call. I like varying the direction that my that my twigs are going. So I could have gone out here. And if you were thinking you would go out there, that's fine. But what I was noticing is that this branch was going out that way and I didn't want the next one to be doing exactly what the previous one was. So that's why that's why I decided to dive this one down. And then where do I want to go? Maybe this one could kind of angle up a little bit. I've quilted an, an entire quilt in this design and I loved it. And I felt like it was a pretty, a pretty beginner friendly design because you're just dealing with one little branch at a time and you have a lot that you can change. You can change the direction of your branch. You can change how long it is. You can change if you put a leaf there or not and how big your leaves are and even which direction your leaves are pointing. You know, your leaves can point a little bit backwards or a little bit forwards to fill in whatever space you're facing there. Like this one was so tiny, but let's see one. Yeah, this one I kind of pointed it back instead of all the other ones were pointing forward forward on the stem. So um, because of all those things that you can vary, it really gives you a lot of options, but you can do them slowly, right? It's not one of those designs that's happening so fast, like meandering that you're having to make your decisions really quickly. You can stop at all of these points. You can stop at the ends of your leaves. You can stop at the, the tops of your leaves or the bottoms. You can stop before you put your stem and after you put your stem. So these are all places that you can stop and catch a breath and decide where you're going next. If you end up with an extra space, you could always at the end go like, oh gosh, that space I left was too big. I'm just going to come back over here, start here, and put a little branch and put a leaf right there. You could do that and nobody will know that you did it. And so it's easy to fix any problems that end up in this design too. So I really hope you try sketching this one because not only are you learning one new design, you're also just teaching your brain how to move around any sort of branching design. And once you've learned that, you can change this. Um, there's a bunch of branching designs in, I mean, I'm going to say, when I say a bunch, like four or five maybe in this book, the step-by-step -step free motion quilting. So if you have that book, go back through it and see if you can find the branching designs and see if you can make your own or try a different one. Like your branch could be like this. You could be like, um, what's one of them in there? I mean, I think there's one where there's like a pretty flower or something at the end and then leaves. Your leaves could totally change. They could be like those long skinny leaves that remind me of tarragon. That would be fine. There's one where the leaves are like a little spiral and then a frilly echo of the spiral back. There's one where the leaves are a little arc and then a pebble at the end and then following the arc back. Right, but they all do the same thing. After you finish that stem, the stem comes off. The stem comes off and the stem comes off. So maybe the only thing you have to remember if you're like creating your own branching design is leave enough space between your leaves so there's a, a path out for your next stem to start. All right.